Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I actually wanted to revisit a video that I did back in December of 2022, which is about six months ago, where I actually made a video talking about how I made my OC Masaki into a Shimeji or a desktop buddy. And I didn't really go into too much detail. So today we're actually going to be revisiting this kind of concept. But today you're gonna be seeing kind of like two different sessions. For, so for the most part, the first five minutes of this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys some kind of choices and things I went about in terms of changes I wanted to make to the I guess like the Shimeji process that I went through. And then the remaining part of the video, I'll be trying my best through voiceover and through kind of like text on the screen, explain my process of how I'm gonna make it. So if you're unfamiliar, I am gonna be drawing Ike Eveland from Niji Sanji and he's part of their uh, fourth wave, which is part of Luxiam. So I wanted to make a Shimeji of him for kind of like a birthday thing and it's kind of for his fan base as well which is called Quildrens and I was having a hard time trying to think of how I wanted to stylize the shimmages so shimmages are actually made more or less if you download the kind of like generic template for it it's about 128 pixels by 128 pixels which is really small and condensed and it makes it really hard for me to get clear lines or things with a lot of detail to appear properly on the screen at such a scale so i decided that because a lot of vtubers and especially like the niji sanji members or even genshin characters they tend to have so much details that i feel bad kind of like not including some of them so i thought it'd be a good way to include all the details by actually doing it in more of a pixel style because i can rely a little bit more on cleaner details this way and i feel like things just appear more i don't know a little bit more crisp and clear versus me doing really tiny line art and really tiny uh i guess like coloring and everything i think this way just makes it a little bit much more of a clearer image of the character walking like around your screen and stuff so that's what i'm kind of showing you guys right now so i basically decided that i would just sketch out ike and for the most part usually the shimmages either face left or right depending on the character or depending on i guess how you want to set it up but for the most part, I always make the character face the left side of the screen, so they're looking that way. And th basically the first frame of the Shimeji that you usually draw tends to be the kind of like standalone frame of them just standing facing one side. And then the second and third frame are actually the ones that make your Shimeji move, so that allows them to kind of like really walk upon like your screen or really like hurry across your screen and it looks really cute and i wanted to do a little bit of testing because if i can make this work out i thought that i could do all the frames in this pixel style which i end up doing but i'm not going to be showing you guys the entire process of that for this particular ike one but in the future if uh, I guess time permits, every so often I will try my best to do like maybe a YouTube stream where I'll work on a pixel shimmeji or something and people can ask questions a little bit more, I don't know, tailored to the process if that's possible. But I'll try my best like near the kind of like the second portion of the video to explain a little bit more of the actual process because I'm going to kind of really dumb it down quite a bit by making a much more simple character. But you can see that with this pixel style, it's a little bit more easier for me to also adjust each part of the character because I can easily move things and shift things without looking, I guess like too awkward. Even though like some things like the transform tool, I can't really use other like otherwise things look a little bit too fuzzy but for the most part it was easy for me to adjust certain pixels i do dabble a little bit in pixel art so i do have a little bit of knowledge i do think that if you don't mind using a mouse as well you can definitely pick up something like even like ms paint or anything that allows you to work with pixels and then if you're able to save it in a png format you can definitely work with a mouse and make your own shimmages like this and you don't have to worry about having super clear lines so here's kind of like the first three frames of a shimmeji. So they, from left to right, we have our stand, like our standing position, and then we have crossing the legs, and then the legs kind of farther apart. And that kind of gives us the basic walk cycle for our shimmeji. 
Okay, so like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I didn't want to film the entire process for Ike's because it took way too long. So I wanted to film actually only the portion where I was working on the quildren shimeji because they're basically just a puff ball with a like a quill or a feather on the top of their head. So I thought it'd be much easier for me to explain the process a little bit more with a much more simple design. So I'm gonna be still sticking with the pixel kind of art style so that the quill drain can match with the Ike Shimiji. And you can see that I was trying to plan out the proportions a little bit because the shimiji for the quildren, I want it to be somewhat more in scale that I wanted the shimiji to be much smaller than the Ike version. So for Ike, I kind of had like the standard size of most people's chibi shimejis that I've mostly seen. And then for the quildren, I'm basically like kind of making it almost half the size of Ike, a little bit over half, just because there are some actions that require it to touch a certain point. So I needed to make sure that that would fit appropriately. So for the actual process, the first few frames similar to the Ike one is kind of just the walking animation or in this case I'm going to be making the quildren basically bounce up and down so usually the character will face left or right because in the program for Shimiji it will basically mirror your image so if you have an asymmetrical design I highly recommend that you pick the side that you like the most for your character and just focus on that because once it faces the other side it will basically just be mirrored so if that bothers you I don't know if there's a workaround but for the most part I just leave it as whichever side that you prefer the most I will draw the character facing that side which tends to be mostly just the character facing the left because that's what I'm most used to drawing Shimiji's facing but you can see that I have just the quildren for the I guess like image number two and three is just another up motion so that every time it returns back to the first frame, he comes back down and hits the bottom of the screen. And you can see we still have a lot to do because I still have to do the shaking motion and the falling animation too. But before I wanted to do that, I forgot that I should make the icon for the actual Shimiji itself. So for Ike's, I actually made it the pen nib, which is very, I guess like apparent in his design because he has it for his earring. But for the quildren, because I couldn't think of anything to represent them properly other than themselves, I just did a quick pixel version of themselves. They kind of turned out looking kind of like a, a music note, which I think kind of looks kind of cute. I'm going to make sure that that's transparent so that when you open up the application, it will be the icon that you see in your task bar or in your icon tray. So for the next few frames, I'm going to do my best to label what frames that I'm working on. And at the very end, I'm going to uh, kind of provide a little bit of some tips of how I organize certain frames as is, because there is a portion of frames that I find a little bit confusing, which is mostly the sit and spin motion for the shimijis because they're not labeled in order. So I'll put the order of what I use for that at the very end if you're interested. But I highly recommend that if you are interested in making any kind of shimijis, definitely take a look at um, previous frames that people have made. Or if you download just the basic model of kind of like the guy with the giant white, I don't know, it's just like a, he's just like a blob, a white blob. He has like a humongous head and he has like a little skinny body. And you can kind of figure out at least a little bit of what kind of actions you need to do for each of the frames. So you can kind of think of the frames for each individual image as kind of like a mini animation because you can see that when I was working on the falling animation you have the one where he's kind of falling and crying the next frame is when he hits the floor and then the next frame that I'm currently working on is when he's kind of bouncing back up so it's kind of like a free step process for the character to hit the floor and then return back to their normal state of walking or just like the idle animation um, and then the next frames that I'm working on are the kind of like crawling frames. So for the quildren, I decided that I would just make it look like it's just scooting itself across the the surface. I mostly for people who make ones of chibis tend to have like their their butt and their legs kind of push inwards, so they look like they're just scooting across like a slug. So that's kind of the usual method that I've seen people do. 
this one is kind of like, I feel like it's very easy to be very creative with this one because it's the jumping animation. So basically it's a one frame thing, but I like to make the character kind of like as a, a ninja or something like that because I think it's kind of cute when they just do one frame going across the whole screen. So I made the Quildren match with the Ike one. And for me, that's like the easiest thing for me to do. But I think other than the multiplying frames where the shimiji will duplicate itself, the shaking back and forth was one of the hardest ones for me to do that was in more or less the pixel style because I have to adjust things a little bit slower because the one I did of Masaki where I didn't do in the pixel style, I kind of just took his body and just slowly shifted it by using the transform tool. But the transform tool for pixels tend to make them a lot less clear and a little bit more fuzzy. So it's easier for me to manually change it. And you can see that anytime there's a kind of like a green box or a a blue box that's basically a border or something that you can't make the character overlap but in this case the green border is actually where the shimiji is going to overlap with the side of your screen so it looks like it's climbing um but i think at the very end i'll show you guys like a mini showcase of the shimijis that i made kind of recently so it'll be the ike one my old masaki one and then the cauldron and for Anyone who's interested in making shimijis and maybe you don't have access to a tablet or you don't have that much patience wanting to draw at such a small scale, I highly recommend just trying out doing pixel art because you can definitely do it with a mouse. It does take a little bit more time, but it's definitely possible as well as that. I think it's just a cute way to do it because the pixel style I think fits really well with the overall aesthetic of just computers in general because it's super, I don't know, in theme and in lined, like aligned with kind of just how computers look in general so yeah so this one is actually the sit and spin one so i will leave the numbers either on the screen or at the very end when i talk about it so i'll show you guys kind of like a little showcase of the the sit and spin head which usually is the character just looking around but for me i wanted to do a little jumping animation of the cauldron having little kind of blue glow sticks to kind of like represent if they're cheering for ike because i thought it looked a little bit cuter so yeah, I did use the airbrush tool for some things for both Ike and the Quildren. And I know some people who do pixel art don't use that. They usually do like some kind of dithering or some other way to create a gradation. But for me, for like just to make things a little bit more consistent, it's just easier for me to use the airbrush tool to do the gradation for the Quildren's quill. And then Ike's hair gradation with the blue and then anything like glowing ports or anything like that. It's just more easier for me. Um, so the quilter doesn't have legs, so it's unable to sit and kind of dangle its legs. So I just made it kind of do another animation instead. And this is one of the other ones that I was talking about that requires the, I guess the character to be somewhat at a certain height. So the blue box or the box that I'm trying to make the quildren kind of reach is actually the box that is kind of used for people to know where, when the character is grabbing a window. So it knows that it has to touch these certain borders. So it looks like it's actually touching your window. So the cauldron had to kind of like squish up so that it makes sure that it looks like it's able to reach it. So he might look a little funky, but for the most part, I think it worked out. So for the last few frames, I believe it's the last 10 frames. So five frames for each of them are basically the two duplicating frames. And they're usually labeled as pull up shimiji and the other ones split in two. So the most common ones that I've seen is that the pull up shimiji is basically pulling the character from in front of them from the bottom up. So it's kind of like pulling out like a, a weed from the ground and when they pull out the character it's able to multiply the character because it's a way to introduce another shimiji to your window. And then the other one is the split into two which is i've seen people like grab their character's hair like the character grabs their own hair and just like pulls out like a hair clump and that hair clump is actually just another shimiji behind them so it's a way for them to kind of multiply but for the quildren and for ike i did decide to not do those actions even though i think those actions timing wise fits the best for those for ike i had him do basically kind of like screamo yelling kind of 
pitched voice where he breaks the screen so it looks like you know the screen break causes another one to appear and then the second one is a bunch of quildrons kind of like i don't know like all huddle him and then when he breaks out there's another ike that comes out and then for the quildron i just had one kind of appear like another feather quill appear from behind him and then they kind of split and then this one i have as a second little blob that comes from the the main shimmyji i guess so just for like a little mini showcase i do apologize that for some reason my screen recording doesn't like to show off shimmyji so it's gonna look a little laggy i promise that when you use it it's actually not laggy unless your computer has too many uh, shimmyji's roaming around so have Google open so that they can interact with the window and they can throw the window, they can sit on top upon the window, climb the window, they also can climb the side of your screens and stuff. So I have two Ikes on the screen currently and then I'm going to drop a few quildrons so that you can see a bunch of different of kind of like the different animations or the frames that I've been making for each of the characters. Now for the frame for the sit and spin head. I actually have it like written down on how I do the order. So in your Shimiji kind of files, you'll see like, I think every individual image is named like Shime or Shime, like S-H-I-M-E and then like, like a number next to it. And certain numbers will kind of equate to certain actions that the code will read. So for me, I actually do the sit and spin I'll put it on the screen too so that you don't have to listen to me talk about this is that i go 26 15 27 16 28 17 to 29 and for me that gives my like the best result for me to do a consistent animation of like the sit and spin or any kind of animation so in this case it's the quildren doing the little jumping with the glow sticks and for me it's much easier to remember this this way because the way how the file is set up for some reason frames 15 to 18 or something like that and frames 26 to i don't know 29 they're all separate so for me it was a little bit confusing knowing how to order them because they basically alternate starting with 16 and 15 and they alternate all the way to 29 for me to get kind of like a seamless animation so um, you can see the different little animations that the quildrons are doing, the different Ike ones. You saw the quildren push off my window with Ike on it. And then when the, basically the window goes away, you can restore windows by right clicking any of your shimmyjis to restore your windows or going into your tray icons to do that as well. And then Ike fell back from the screen cause he was chucked off. And yeah, I just think it's a cute way to add some stuff to your, kind of like your desktop if you want them to, as long as like you're watching over them. Also, so for Maseki, I, you can kind of see the difference between the different styles. I do think Maseki's colors look really cute because they're very bold, but I think Ike's just fits a little bit better because he has much more details compared to Maseki that I wanted to include. So yeah, it's kind of just preference for the most part. I'll make sure to leave any notes and stuff, even the description or throughout the video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!